Joining me in the Cattle Studio for the first time for my mayor is newly minted candidate Pete Bolin. Welcome, sir. Hey, thanks for having me, Joe. So how's life on the new campaign trail? It is exciting. Uh, it is energizing. The, the voters are, uh, are coming out. The supporters are coming out. Uh, we're getting some good donations to the campaign. Uh, we're just kind of nonstop. It's basically uh, 14, 15 hour days, all day, every day. It's, uh, it's really energizing and we're really excited uh, to talk St. Pete. And I, I think our passion for the city is going to bleed through our campaign and, and, and reach uh, every corner of the city. And, and I hope people are really excited. And when we talk St. Pete, at the heart of St. Pete right now is the Tropicana Field site, and there's a lot of action around the redevelopment, uh, the Rays, and so we're looking into that, getting your insights into uh, the TROP, and we're starting, uh, we're looking at past, present, and future, so let's kick off with past. What do we need to know about the history? Well, I like to think of myself as a little bit of a big picture guy, so I want, want to kind of remind people of some perspective on this thing. Uh, you know, we really started this process in the late 70s, kind of exploring where to do something like this. You know, with uh, the, the Buccaneers came along in the, in the early 70s, uh, mid to early 70s, and then the Rowdies, same thing, and then St. Pete. Pinellas wanted to get involved in it. So it kind of started in 1979, explored uh, uh, good sites. And then 1983 was when the ball really got rolling, and then we built the stadium in 86. And I just want to remind people that... Uh, it was a very painful process getting professional sports here and it caused a lot of pain, a lot of damage. Uh, we built the last multi-purpose dome in North America, maybe even the world. So we were kind of the last of an old way of doing things. It was antiquated the day they laid the last block in 1990 and it caused a lot of pain. We, we destroyed a neighborhood to, to get pro sports here and, and we're still feeling the effects of that now decades later. You know, we're almost 40 years from when that, that ground was first broke uh, and when the process and planning started in 1983. So I think that we need to kind of take this into mind that there was a lot of pain, a lot of sacrifice, a lot of strife. Even when we built the stadium in 1990, it sat without a major tenant for eight years. So, uh, and it's become this kind of butt of the, the jokes too. We went through a lot to get pro sports here in, in Pinellas County. And, and I think it's an important thing to understand how, how much it, it took us to get there and that we shouldn't just give it away so easily. We've got to come up with a permanent solution for this thing. And, and, you know, as, uh, as we talk about the pain and, and that you mentioned a couple of times and the neighborhood being, being taken away for that space, um, as if elected mayor, how would you lead us coming and healing from that pain? Well, I think we've, we've got to get the community involved the way people are, are, are asking to be involved. You know, the, a lot of those descendants of the gas plant neighborhood, they want a seat at the table and, and they have a stake in it. And, uh, you know, they've got eminent domain pretty bad. Uh, back then, and, and they, they still feel uh, that struggle. I, I remember uh, first learning about this as, as a young kid, grew up in, in Shore Acres. I remember uh, going to get my hair cut in the South Side and seeing pamphlets of, during the 2009 mayoral campaign about what are we gonna do about the displant, this, displaced people at the gas plant district. So it, it's, a, it's a real painful thing for a lot of people. I think what we've gotta do is, first, when we're talking about the big scale development, I think we need to carve it up. We need to figure out what's going on with the Rays, right? That's gonna be a huge, uh, Player. And for me, I'm going to be a tireless advocate for saving pro sports around here. And uh, I think that we need to carve up this development. It's such a huge project for us to kind of touch on a lot of these different things to, to help the people from the gas plant district kind of get their share of the equity in the gains uh, of, of this new redevelopment. And then we've got to preserve some of the natural aspects of it too with, with Booker Creek. And uh, I think it's an exciting opportunity. And then if we're kind of do this right, it's going to open up Alang Field. You know, we're going to have another great parcel to figure out. So it's, a, it's an exciting time, and there's definitely a, a sense of urgency here. And I, and I feel that, and I think that's a palpable feeling throughout the city, too. You know, you mentioned the sense of urgency, and that's a, that's a good segue into uh, our current situation. There's a lot of folks that are moving really quickly, a lot of folks that want to slow down. Um, there's talk about bringing a consultant in uh, to get an objective third-party understanding of, of, of the data. Uh, so what's your best uh, overview of, of where we stand right now with regard to the various stakeholders? So I think that the urgency is we've got two exploding issues here. Okay, we've got an attainable housing crisis. We like to use attainable housing so people can know that it's not going to be just government subsidized stuff. It needs to be attainable housing for the workforce, right? We think that's a, that's a really big deal. Uh, and then also, 
if we don't solve this problem here with the Rays, that we're kind of in the, the eighth inning, I would like to say. We're not in the ninth inning yet, but we're in the eighth inning. We're getting in the later innings of this thing. You know, the, the lease of the Trop ends in, in 2027. So we're looking at a 2028 kind of plan here. And when we talk about all that pain and everything else we just went through over the last uh, nearly 40 years to get pro sports here, we understand that if we don't get this right, the urgency is to get it right and have a permanent solution. So we need to try to save pro sports. The Rays own the Rowdies as well. Uh, and they kind of see this whole marketplace as being a, a, a real asset, but they can up and leave. They've been talking about leaving for 14 years now. So we're, we're in the late innings of this thing. And I think that between the attainable housing uh, opportunity that we can address with this 86 acre development and then saving pro sports, I think that's what people need to understand. And you know, we went through all this stuff to get pro sports, and now we need to kind of fight to, to get something solved here. I think it's uh, the Sternberg Group has been very difficult. You know, if I come along, I'll be the sixth mayor to, to deal with this issue, and no matter what, we're going to get a new mayor here, so there'll be a sixth mayor that they've dealt with going all the way back to 2007. So it's not going to be easy. Uh, we're going to be able to figure out a way to do it where we don't raise taxes on anybody. We're going to bring that equity to the table for those people in the gas plant district that were hung out to dry a little bit uh, by our... Uh, our previous leaders, and uh, we've got to really address this attainable housing crisis and, and look at things like Booker Creek and really restore some of the natural beauty of, of why people wanted to live there 100 years ago as it was. So in appreciation of how hard it was to get a pro sports team and, and how you said you'd be a fierce advocate for keeping it, um, what do you see as uh, you know the main areas that are the hurdles for coming together, obviously money is one of them, but you know, what will be your strategy when going and working with the team uh, to get to get them uh, into a place to stay? Well, I, I think we're, we're looking at, these guys are our Wall Street guys. They're very shrewd. And I don't know if we've had the kind of the right tactic and I don't know if the political will's been there uh, in the past. And I think there's just been this divide in the community about what should it be in Tampa? Should it be in St. Pete when it comes to the stadium issue? Um, but I think it's kind of clear that Tampa had their shot and they couldn't get it done. I thought that was uh, actually one of the things that the, the current administration did well was to call their bluff a little bit. We knew they didn't have a great space for a stadium over there and that they were gonna, if they were gonna find a great place, they were gonna have to do something very difficult like tear up someone's high school. Like there was a, a lot of talk over there um, that there's no great epicenter here to Tampa Bay. So it's not, there's not just some great logical place to put it, but uh, the, the difficulty is going to be to find that good split. Can we get the entire region involved in the solution a little bit? Can we get enough county money, city money, private money together? And can we get the Rays convinced that they're going to have a great partnership? Uh, they're definitely having an adversarial relationship now. It seems to be that, you know, if, if you look on the outside in, there would be kind of the common denominator where we talk about this will be the next mayor of St. Pete's going to be the sixth mayor between uh, the two mayors in Tampa and, and then the, the previous three over here. It's, it's going to be tricky. And, and there's also, there's not a lot of uh, will right now to put a lot of money into to public stadiums. So uh, the timing is not great. And, and maybe we could have got something together 14 years ago when they talked about the Alang site first. But I think there's no better place in North America for a new stadium than here in St. Pete. And downtown St. Pete is just one of the great places in the world to live, uh, to raise a family, to do business in. And, and I, I just love St. Saint, Saint Pete so much. And I think that we deserve to give it our best shot and to make sure that we don't fleece the taxpayers. We don't fleece the community again like we did in the past or like what happened in Miami with one of the most recent uh, constructions of a stadium. So I, I think it's, it's going to be difficult. Uh, the money is going to be the biggest thing. And uh, if we can kind of get them to understand what we're doing here as a city and, and where we're at, I think uh, the pandemic brought the Sternberg Group to live here a little bit more and spend some more time here in St. Pete. So uh, maybe maybe they kind of better understand. I know that he doesn't love our Chinese food <laughs> around here, but maybe he can uh, see some of what we see and why we love St. Pete so much and, and want to build that, that futuristic 21st century ballpark. Speaking of the future, that's our, our final piece here. So, if we think of the North Star, uh, it's the analogy I've been using as far as what are we, what are we walking towards? What are, what's the path we're on, and what are we moving towards with the Trop? What are the elements that that uh, make up that North Star? So, when we're looking at the Trop redevelopment, I think we've got to 
have just this futurist mindset. We want to have the most efficient place. We want to have a huge green space. I want lots of trees there. I see this restoration of Booker Creek being this great natural beauty. I think it needs to be hyper energy efficient, needs to be hurricane proof. We need to plan for that kind of 2050 strategy. Uh, and then the ballpark should be part of that play. If the Rays want to be at the Tropicana Field site, we've got to build the first of the next generation of ballpark. The model for baseball has changed a little bit. They're not building the 50,000 seat stadiums anymore. Uh, it needs to be an intimate ballpark that's kind of like a TV studio, that people will have an interactive TV studio that's this first of the new generation of ballpark. You look at like what Camden Yards was in 1993, 1992, 1993. That was the first of the next generation of the old timey kind of feeling ballparks. I think this is going to be that new intimate stadium that we can that we, we can put together uh, for the new century and have a permanent solution. So I see something like just super efficient homes, a really mixed use community that, that has a lot of density that people can raise a family in that you know some of the consequences of living downtown is when you when you get married and have a kid, there's not a place to kind of grow and, and, and have a family in a lot of these buildings around here. So I think we need to have that in mind. Like I, I see uh, those mixed use, kind of an old town kind of feel where there's a lot of tight corridors and, and neighborhoods. It's this real, real vibrant, uh, futuristic neighborhood. And I think that all, we need to try to engineer that, that most efficient, brilliant, green space, intimate neighborhood uh, with a 21st century ballpark. And I think that we have to have lofty goals uh, and my, my business, I always try to pursue perfection so we can attain excellence. And I think if we, we try to hit this note and have an equitable solution and a permanent solution that's just really about uh, just being the first of this next generation of development and, and take keys from a lot of, uh, a lot of our neighbors and, and uh, other, other cities around the country, I, I, you look at some of the great things they're doing, Cascade Development over there too uh, in Tampa, I think that there's, there's a lot to be learned from what other people are doing. And, and then we can be innovative to have just this this crown jewel of a neighborhood and, uh, and make people feel like a, a sense of belonging to this 21st century St. Pete. Sounds great. And to dig into one specific piece of that, uh, 175, uh, you know, is, is, is off talked about as a divider between the neighborhoods uh, to the north and the south of it. Um, you know, obviously access to hospitals there and just general access to the ballpark. Uh, what are your thoughts on uh, how we should handle 175? I think... That's a complicated issue, and I think we need to really explore and, and look at what the fallout is going to be. Obviously, it is a barrier. You know, it's a psychological and physical barrier, Joe. Uh, you, can, you can see it there. And then who wants to live under or, or right next to an overpass? So I, I think that's a complicated thing. But with the growth of USF St. Pete and the Innovation District with John Hopkins and, and then with... Uh, with the airport, I, I, you know, I'm a big advocate of Albertwood Airport. And I think we need to expand and, and do the best we can to improve that economic engine uh, and that asset that we have in the city. So, you know, getting people to and from is going to mean a lot. And then I know the future is going to be autonomous cars and Uber cars. You know, I, I got to Uber down here today. So I think that's going to be the future. So roads are going to be ever more important. You know, look at some of the big transportation projects that we've had here in the Tampa area, the, the Gateway Express is going to connect 19 to the Howard Franklin, and then also the Gandhi Express that connects to the Selman in, uh, on the east side of the bay. Uh, I think it's going to have to be something that really looks at it. It's not going to be an easy decision. It just shouldn't just be, oh, we got to get rid of that thing. You know, we've got to look at some of the, the big picture consequences of this stuff, but there's definitely that feeling uh, of, of this highway just being, you know, that's the wrong side of the tracks kind of feeling. So uh, maybe we look at something, making it a nice boulevard where it could kind of be a cruise down from, from beyond the stadium. But uh, we, we've got to really decide what we want to do, what we want to be. And, and I think that should be tied in with this future Tropicana Field development for sure. Wonderful. Candidate Pete Bowen, thanks for stopping by. Thank you so much for having me. I look forward to talking to you guys again.